So when you look at bacteria, the majority of their genes actually can be found in what we call mobile gene pools that move from species to species. So not all types of E. coli are identical. Um, only about 50% of their genes are found in all strains of E. coli. The rest are found within plasmids, transposons, genomic islands, or phage DNA. So, oh, sorry. So here you can see um, what a plasmid is. Um, it's a replicon that is independent of the chromosome and generally encodes non-essential but beneficial genetic information. Transposons are segments of DNA that um, can move from one location to another um, within a chromosome or from chromosome to plasmid or plasmid to chromosome. Genomic islands are large genomic segments within a cell or genome that originated from another species. And then your phage DNA are um, DNA that comes from bacterial phages um, that carry specific genes that move into the cell. Plasmids are found in most of our bacterial cells. They have typically few genes, but the genes that they do code for can allow for um, survival in certain types of environment. The genes typically aren't necessary for replication. Um, some plasmids are low copy and some are high copy, so that just means how fast they replicate. Most plasmids have a very narrow host range, whereas some plasmids can move from one species to a totally different species of bacteria. Um, and plasmids can move from one cell to another via conjugation if they have the um, fertility factor associated with it. Okay, so what are some of those types of plasmids? Um, so antibiotic resistance. There are certain antibiotic resistance plasmids that can be found in um, many organisms, whereas there are certain types of antibiotic synthesis that are found only in streptomyces species. Gas vacuole production is only found in halobacterium species. Um, we have increased virulence. Uh, found within Yersinia and Shigella. There's an insect toxin synthesis in Bacillus thuringiensis. thuringiensis. Um, tumor formation in plants in agrobacterium. So you can see um, certain plasmids are specific to certain organisms, whereas some plasmids can be found in many organisms. So let's look at resistance plasmids, which are one of the most important, medically speaking. Um, resistance plasmids give bacteria resistant to certain antimicrobial medicines, as well as heavy metals um, and other materials that are found in hospital environments. They have two typical parts. They have the resistant genes, and then they have a resistance transfer factor that allows them to conjugate with other cells. Oh, there we go. Um, the last thing we'll talk about then is how bacteria defend themselves against um, their own pathogens. Um, so when we think of bacteria having their own immune system, bacteria have to fight off typically against phages, bacteriophages, which will kill them. So bacteria have an immune system that protects them. And the first mechanism they use is called restriction enzyme. So a restriction enzyme is an enzyme that cuts DNA at specific sequences. We'll talk about this more in chapter nine um, because we use transcript or we use restriction enzymes a lot in biotechnology. But the original reason for restriction enzymes was to cut DNA. Um, so as DNA moves in to the cell, Trans, um, restriction enzymes will cut the DNA. Um, typically, bacterial cells have 
uh, methylated their DNA at regions where their own restriction enzymes would normally cut because restriction enzymes don't recognize phage versus bacterial versus human DNA. They only recognize a sequence of nucleotides and they cut at that sequence every single time. But what bacteria do is bacteria methylate their own DNA at those sequences. And so when the phage DNA comes in, if it's not methylated at that same region, then the phage DNA is going to get degraded and you won't have viral replication. But if it is methylated, then the virus can replicate and the restriction enzymes can't do anything about it. And then we have CRISPR systems, which um, CRISPR stands for a cluster of regularly interspersed short palindromic repeats. And so what CRISPR systems do is they take bacterial um, DNA, bacteria, I'm not bacterial, bacteriophage DNA, and cut it into small pieces and then put it into um, a CRISPR array. And that allows the cell to remember, it's kind of like memory cells in our immune system, they remember that bacteriophage. So the first invasion, let me go to the next slide where I can show you it. There we go. So the first invasion of the bacteriophage, um, a cast protein will cut up the phage DNA, and some of the phage DNA is going to be um, placed into a CRISPR array. So you can see here there are other types of phages already, and here's this phage DNA right there. So any cells that survive this infection will have that information remembered, okay? And this cell can also replicate. So if a surviving bacterial cell or one of its descendants um, encounters the same bacteri uh, bacteriophage, then um, a crRNA guided Cas nuclease degrades the invading um, DNA, and the bacteria don't have to worry about um, being killed off at all. So it's kind of like their own memory of the pathogen. Um, that's all I have for you. So I'm going to stop here, and I will upload these videos, and I'll get into Chapter 9 shortly. Bye.